Hey everyone, my name is Tony and welcome back to the channel. If you want to model soft and organic shapes in SketchUp like cushions and unique landscapes, then Artisan is an extension that makes it all possible. This is part one of a two part video series where we will show you essential tools in the Artisan extension. Let's get started. So let's get started with Artisan Extrude Faces, which is very similar to the SketchUp native push-pull tool, but with a few extra benefits. In SketchUp, you are limited to push-pull one face at a time with the option to create a new face by pressing Ctrl. In the long run, this can make modeling very slow, but with the Artisan Push-Pull tool, you can select multiple faces and extrude them all at once. And as you know, you also can't push-pull curved faces with the native SketchUp push-pull tool. And this is something you can also do very easy with the Artisan Extrude faces. And as you can see, it's a very flexible and useful tool to make unique extrusions. So amongst the different modes, you have group push-pull. Then you have the normal push-pull. And lastly, individual, which pulls all the faces along the surface normals. If I press shift, I can enable free move. And this allows me to, to move my extrusion in any direction that I like. And needless to say, it also works pretty well for uneven surfaces, something the regular SketchUp tool just can't handle. So once again, I'll select extrude faces. And with a single click, I can easily extrude this surface. To continue with the next couple of tools, we're going to model a couch, which is something that requires a lot of curves and organic modeling. So I'm going to take these basic SketchUp shapes and transform them into this couch while using some of Artisan's most essential tools. So first I'm going to select my shape and activate subdivide and smooth. First thing I'm going to do is change the duration from 1 to 2. This is going to increase the subdivision along the shape. So my goal is to create somewhat of a round cushion with this shape. So let's select the entire shape, activate subdivide. And as you can see with the increased subdivision, I have a smoother and better looking shape. So to define this even further, I'm going to use the loop tool to add edge loop around my shape. And this is going to help to further subdivide my geometry. So activate the loop tool. So here we can add loops to our shape and you can see it becomes even more defined. And you can also use the Alt key to edit the loop. So you're able to move it around and delete loops if you need to. And you can also use the shift key to match adjacent loops. So I'm going to add as many loops as possible. We already have somewhat of a cushion. All we have to do is move things around and make a couple of more modifications. So to create a round profile around our geometry, I'm going to select some of these edges and use artisan move and move some of these edges to get more of a puff profile. I'm also going to use scale to increase the width of some edges from the center. So we get more of a profile like this. So this is the current state of a couch obviously needs a little bit more adjustment. So let's repeat the same workflow onto the shape and it should look something like this. So let's continue with our modern and we're going to subdivide and smooth the shape. Once again, activate subdivision increase the iterations and here is where it gets pretty interesting so i'm going to select my entire shape and i'm going to subdivide once so i get a shape like this now what i want to do is have more of a round profile and i also want the ends to be a little bit more flat so let's go back and i'm going to use inset to offset this part of my shape 
Now the Artisan Inset Face and the Native's Ketchup Offset are pretty similar tools. Artisan offering a little more to support quad modeling. In SketchUp, you're limited to offsetting one face at a time. Whereas with Artisan, if I activate Inset Faces, right now it's offsetting off the perimeter of my selection. And if I hit the Alt key, because I had four faces selected, it's now optimized to offset all of those faces. So we're going to keep this to one. This is exactly what I wanted. Let's actually add an edge loop around here. So this feels a little smoother as you can see. And this actually looks pretty good. So let's do the same for the other corner. So that's a spot where the inset face could be pretty useful. For example, if I wanted this part of my model to be a little bit more flat, Okay, so this is how our model is looking. I want this to have more of a round shape on one of the sides so both of them could read as a full circle. So to make a couple of more adjustments, let's align face, change the parallel projection. I'm actually going to delete a couple of these edges, just like that. We'll repeat on the other side as well. So now this looks about right. I'm going to select these two edges and scale them in. And I'm also going to move this in. You can see when I move and scale some of these edges, we get the right response on our object. And as a result, I get this round shape. So this is giving me exactly what I want. So we're going to leave this here. So I may be trying to follow a specific workflow and use specific tools, but the truth is that you will always go back and make adjustment, which is why the inset faces is very important. The loop tool is very important. And I've shown you how these tool works. So you can always go back and feel confident about the adjustments that you will make. So after a little bit more refinement, this is how a model is looking. So it's looking pretty good. And just a couple of more things that we need to do. And to add just a little bit of touch, going to make this unique going to subdivide we're going to add an edge loop somewhere around here and we'll do it twice and we're going to rotate this by a couple of degrees keep in mind that I'm adding as many loops as possible so to keep a smooth rotation in a way that our shape doesn't break and I'll repeat this process as much as possible until I get the correct result. And for this very last piece, I've already shown you all the tools. So we're just going to re repeat the workflow onto this shape. And if you followed every step so far, I'm simply using the inset face and the loop tool to redefine this shape. After following the workflow, you should get something like this. And after also adding textures, you should end up with something like this. So it's a pretty practical workflow and hopefully you've seen how all the tools work and you can apply them to your 3D modeling workflow. And that's gonna be all for this video. Look forward to part two on the channel. So be sure to subscribe, like the video and share, and also leave a comment and let us know what you'd like us to cover next. As always, catch you guys in the next video.